Hi and welcome back. We began work on the second project in our Introduction to Dreamweaver series. And you can see here the sample project that we're going to be working on. In the last video we went ahead and set up the basic structure that we're going to need to create the pages that are in this site. So Let's go ahead and minimize this right now and you can see the divs that we've gone ahead and set up from our framework. And again, if you don't have the framework, you can go ahead and just type this information into your, um, your page. Now, the top div that's right here actually doesn't have any content inside of it. It's just this orange strip. So the first div we're going to add some content to is going to be this banner div. Now, later on in another video, we're going to actually add the slider effect or the fading effect that um, this banner has on it. For, so for right now, we're just going to go ahead and put one image in that place. And then we'll go ahead and put this title image in as well. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize that and come back here. And you can see our top div that we aren't going to put anything into. And there is the slider div where we're going to go ahead and put the first of our images in. So I'm going to go ahead and click in the middle of this slider div right here. And I'm going to go ahead and open up an image tag. And I'm going to use the source attribute, the source attribute. And when that comes up, I'm just going to hit enter a couple times to go into Dreamweaver's select file dialog box. And I'm going to go ahead and scroll down here. And there I can see the first of my banner images. I could select actually any one of these that I wanted to. If you have the uh, framework, and the project video files, you're going to go ahead and look for one of these images here. If not, you can go ahead and create any image you want to fill in this spot. It just simply needs to be 900 pixels wide by 250 pixels high. And you'll see the size right here. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK there. And I place my banner inside of that div. And then I'm going to go ahead and close the image tag. Now I'm going to go ahead and insert the title banner for the page. And that's this area right here. So again, I've clicked in my banner div. And again, I'm going to go ahead and open up an image tag, select the source attribute, and hit enter for browse to bring me into Dreamweaver's select file dialog box. I'll go ahead and scroll down here. And the title that I'm looking for is right here. And again, if you haven't downloaded the uh, exercise files for this, you just need to go ahead and create a banner that's going to be 900 pixels wide by 60 pixels um, tall. So I've gone ahead and selected that, and I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And then I'm going to go ahead and again close that image tag off. I'll go ahead and save my work by doing Control S. And I'm going to go into Design View to see what we've got so far. And there are the two images that we've gone ahead and placed in. And again, remember from the previous um, project that we worked on, the first thing we're going to go ahead and do is create all the HTML and add the content to the page. And then all of the formatting is going to take place in the CSS. So all we're doing right now is setting up the structure and adding the content to our pages. So let's go ahead and go back into code view. Now, the next area here I, I have is my top nav div. And again, if I bring up my sample, you can see the different menu links right here. Now, remember, your navigation for your pages is always going to be contained in an unordered list, in an unordered list. So let's go ahead and create that right now. I'm going to go ahead and minimize that and come back in here to Dreamweaver. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and open and close my unordered list. And then what I'm going to go ahead and do is I actually have eight menu items here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm sorry, seven menu items here. So I'm just going to go ahead and create seven list items here. So I'm going to go ahead and open them and close them at the same time. I'm going to highlight them and then do control C to copy them. 
and then I'm just going to go ahead and paste that in seven times. And then I'm going to go ahead and type the word in that I want to occur in the list item. So again, I have welcome, about, and menu. So I'm going to go ahead and do welcome, about, menu, and then we have reservations and location. And then finally, wine bar and entertainment. And I'll save that and we'll go into design view and you can see each one of our menu items there. Now, as far as creating the links go, you could go type that code into this area. But this is where Dreamweaver's design view does come into uh, use. I'm going to go ahead and double click on properties right here to bring up the properties panel again. And I'm going to go ahead and highlight welcome and I'm going to go ahead and type in index.html there because that's going to be the name of my home page. And I'm going to do that for each one of these about.html select it and menu.html reservations.html location.html we'll do wine bar or wine.html and finally entertainment.html now I have actually haven't created any of these pages yet all we're working on is sort of the master page at this point so I just have to remember what I named those pages or go back and check by clicking on the link when I actually go to create the individual pages and make sure that I name them correctly and when I go back into code view you can see Dreamweaver has added the appropriate code in here for our links and you'll see the a tag there with the href attribute that actually forms the link around the anchor text that we've placed right there and then we go ahead and close our anchor tag and again you could type this in or you could use Dreamweaver's properties panel I generally don't use design view for very much in Dreamweaver I prefer to type my code in um, so that it's nice and clean and that I know exactly what's going on but there are some instances where Dreamweaver's um, design view does come in useful creating links is one of them and adding generic content or adding content into your pages is definitely another place where Dreamweaver's design view comes in handy the only thing you don't want to do is to become dependent upon creating all of your structure inside of design view because then you really won't have control over what you're working on so I've gone ahead and I've created our top navigation links and again this is all going to be formatted with CSS to look like this then the next thing we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and place this sub banner in here so I'm again going to minimize my browser window here and I'm going to go ahead and click inside of my sub banner and again that's an image so I'm going to go ahead and open up my image tag and use the source attribute when browse comes up I'll hit enter to come into my select the file dialog box and I'm still in my images folder and I'm gonna go ahead and scroll on down here and you can see I've got bottom small banner and top small banner and again if you haven't downloaded the exercise files for this all you need to do is create an image that's 900 pixels wide by 120 pixels tall so I'm gonna go ahead and select that and click OK and then I'm going to go ahead and type a space and I'm going to go ahead and close my image tag now we're going to go ahead right now and add that bottom banner image in as well since we're working with images we'll come back to this content area in just a moment so let's go ahead and do that area right there I'm going to go ahead and click in my bottom banner and again open up 
my image tag, use the source attribute, and this time I'm going to select the bottom small banner. And again, it's going to be 900 pixels wide by 120 pixels tall. I'll click OK, and then I'm going to go ahead and close my image off. Now, the footer area is filled in with this orange color again, and it just has this text right here. And I'm going to go ahead and copy that. And I'm just going to go ahead and go into my footer, and that's going to be in a paragraph tag. So I'm going to go ahead and enter that on in there. And then I'm going to go ahead and close my paragraph. Now you're going to notice that the copyright symbol actually got placed in there. When I save this and go into design view, you're going to see it there as well. But it won't come up all the time. So we need to actually replace that second special symbol with a special code that's going to give us the copyright symbol. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. And I'm going to go ahead and type an ampersand. And the code that you're going to use is ampersand, copy, and then a semicolon. I will go ahead and save that. And again, when we go into design view, again, you're going to see that copyright symbol. Now it will come up in all browsers for all users. So we've gone ahead and entered in our bottom banner and our footer information. So the next thing we want to go ahead and do is we want to go ahead and place some content in this content area. Now all you're going to have to do for this is go ahead and enter in a couple blocks of text. I have an H1 heading right here followed by a couple of paragraphs of text, an H2 heading right here, followed by another paragraph of text. And another item that I have in my framework, if I go ahead and switch into that, is if you go into the framework folder, into the HTML folder, you're going to see lorem right here. And if I open that up, I just have some generic text that you can use. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight this text here and copy it. I'm going to close that off and I'm just going to go ahead and paste that into this area here. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter after that banner and paste those paragraphs of text in there. And then I'm going to go ahead and type welcome to Conte, and then, oops, subheading on page. Save that, and let's take a look at our code and make sure that that's come in there correctly. And you can see sub banner here, whoops. This is a reason why you don't want to depend on Dreamweaver's design view for doing a whole lot of things. You can see here it's actually placed all of this text not inside of the content div but inside of the sub banner div so that's actually going to be a problem for us right now so what I want to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and select that text that I copied in there right click and cut it and then I'm going to go ahead and paste it into the content area and I need to go ahead and just sort of even that all out there. And then I can go ahead and remove that P tag from there. Remove that P tag from there. And actually I'm going to use my tab options there to even that out. So you can see that's a great example of why I don't use Dreamweaver's design view is because you don't really know all the time where information is going, whether you're copying and pasting it or whether you're just typing it on in. So when I save this and go into design view, I can still see my text there. Now I need to go ahead and change this to an H1 tag. And again, this is where Dreamweaver's design view will always work for you. I'm going to go ahead and open up that properties panel. You can see I just double click on the name there to open and close it. And I'm going to go ahead and highlight welcome to Conte. 
and I'm going to go ahead and put it in a first level heading. And then I'm going to go ahead and highlight subheading on page and I'm going to change that over to a second level heading. And when I save it, those codes will have been appropriately changed. And I do need to go ahead and sort of tab that over to make sure that those are even. And we'll save that. I'm going to tab that on over again just to keep everything nice and clean. And again, I'm going to go ahead and clean that up as well. And that's the closing div for our wrapper, so I'm not going to move that over. But I am going to move these over there. And again, Dreamweaver's design view is sort of the enemy of clean code. So uh, be sure to stay away from it except for um, very limited circumstances. So we've gone ahead and we've placed all the content onto our sample page that we're going to need. In the next video, we're going to go ahead and begin to create the CSS that's going to actually format this whole page. So I'll see you in the next video.